Ephesians chapter 3, verses 1 to 12. And we read here that uh, this is the Apostle Paul speaking. It says, For this reason I, Paul, the prisoner of Christ Jesus, for you Gentiles, if indeed you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which was given to me for you. So straight away we're, we have a picture forming in our mind. This is the Apostle Paul talking. And uh, he's specifically saying that he's a prisoner for the Lord Jesus Christ. And the reason it says that he's a prisoner for the Lord Jesus Christ is for you Gentiles. So he's speaking specifically to the non-Jewish people in the Ephesians uh, verses that we're reading right now. He says, for this reason, it's for this reason, I, Paul, the prisoner of Christ Jesus, for you Gentiles, if indeed you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which was given to me for you. So if you've heard about the dispensation, if you've heard that I have come to give you uh, knowledge of a gift that is being given to you, a, a dispensation that you are not considered the children of God up to this point, but now there is a dispensation. Now you are being brought into that whole kingdom of God as joint heirs with Christ. And uh, he says in verse 4, by which when you read you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. So this was a complete mystery. This was quite a shock as well to, to the Jews especially. Imagine you are a Jew. You've been brought up in a Jewish nation for many, many years. You have considered yourself to be special in the eyes of God. And that these other dogs, these pagans, these non-Jews, these people who did not know God or understand God, suddenly this is a shock to the system because... Paul is now talking to these infidels, these dogs, these pagan people that were not Jewish people, and saying, I have a new dispensation for you. I have been sent to you by God to bring you into his kingdom. So that there is no longer Jew and Gentile, there is only a new follower of Christ. It's a dispensation. It's God has given you an opportunity and an opening and offered you a new position as a child of God. Amazing. What a shock to the Jewish people. No, this can't, surely can't be. You can imagine them being a little bit like Jonah going to Nineveh. I'm not going to go and preach to them and get them to repent. They're awful people. And that was the attitude towards the non-Jews from a Jewish person at that time. It was not um, accepted that anyone outside of the Jewish nation that was covered and, and blessed by God could possibly come into a relationship with God. An impossibility. Unless they became Jews and got circumcised were proselytized and brought into the Jewish faith. That is the only way they could be considered safe, part of the Jewish household or something. But this is a new thing that's going on, that Paul's offering. This is something completely different. This is saying, you're going to be considered the same as we are. Well, the Jews didn't like that at all. They really were quite uh, offended by that. And the scribes and the Pharisees, they thought this was a terrible thing to be doing, which is why there was so much opposition. Because it's difficult for us to understand. If, if people are, are basically spiritual, why would they have so much opposition to the gospel? Well, this was one of the main reasons. It's an offence. It was a total offence to a Jewish person to think that someone else who had come from parentage that had not been seen to be going right the way back to the line uh, of Adam and not going back to the line of being brought out of Egypt not being in the Passover not being circumcised through generations suddenly 
to be saying, forget all that. Now, if you follow Jesus, you can have a relationship with God the same as the Jewish people. That was totally offensive. You could understand why they were saying this is, this is blasphemy, this is awful. So you can understand it. And they didn't accept Jesus for these reasons. They, they, he offended them. And it's the same today. In our psyche, we find it hard to accept something for nothing. We find it hard to accept Jesus coming as a, as a child in a manger to be given freely to us as a gift from God as a peace offering to reconcile us with God and many of us find that rather difficult to accept that there's nothing we can do about it we can't earn our salvation in any way we can't make ourselves right with God in any way we can't buy our way in we can't have status and an admiration and elevation in, in whatever we have done or whatever we do that will bring us into a, a, a better position with God. There is nothing we can do to help our situation with God when we have broken God's law and we have been people who have fallen short of the mark that God's given us. Nothing we can do to come into that relationship with God. And then suddenly, suddenly out of the blue, at this time, to the Jewish nation, there appears a man, a baby, starts off as a baby. And this person brings the peace of God when people trust and believe in him for their salvation, for the reconciliation work with God. It's not through what they've done. It's not through history of being churchgoers or Jewish people. Suddenly, it's about a relationship. It's about understanding what Jesus did for us on the cross and Paul who was an apostle this was his function this was his job this was what he was called for this is what he was born for the plan and purpose of God which we all have in our lives Paul's plan and purpose was to be born was to be bred and understood become knowledgeable about knowledgeable about the, about the scriptures because he was going to become a teacher, a great teacher, in Christendom. And this Paul suddenly brings this new gospel, a new way of relating to God, to the non-Jews. Imagine what that was like for the Jewish people. And even today, they are offended by the gospel, many of them. Not Messianic Jews, who have accepted Christ, but Jewish Jews the Jewish people who consider that the Old Testament scriptures are the scriptures but the New Testament they just don't read they don't believe they don't understand many of them haven't read it but when they have read the New Testament and they have seen the Old Testament prophecies that we've read of today being fulfilled in the New Testament they often just come straight to Christ they become Messianic Jews Christian Jews because they suddenly see Christ revealed in the New Testament from the Old Testament which they know very well far better than any of us because it's been drummed into them they've, they've grown up with it they've lived with it they've breathed it and they understand the Old Testament in ways that Christians don't because we haven't got their culture and understanding we try very hard to understand the Old Testament scriptures but there's no way we can understand them as well as a Jewish person who's been brought up in the faith, the Jewish faith and understanding and all the, all the knowledge that they've had and acquired and you know how that knowledge has come to pass. So when the Jewish people saw this going on, they were offended. They were against everything. Paul himself was a Jew. He was a Pharisee. And he was actually tagged as being the next high priest and suddenly he's met with Christ and suddenly instead of persecuting Christians because of his offence he suddenly met the Lord Jesus Christ on the road to Damascus and his whole life and world has turned upside down because he suddenly has had Christ revealed and that's what he says here 
in verse 4, by which when you read you may understand um, my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known to the sons of men, as it has now been revealed by the Spirit to his holy apostles and prophets. So he's explaining, this is a new day, this is a new thing. This was not revealed before. But now suddenly this is being revealed to the apostles, to those who spent time with Christ, to those who were in Christ and were taught by Christ, the apostles, of which Paul became one when he was met with Christ on the road to Damascus. And the prophets of old, these people, they had the Lord Jesus Christ revealed to them through the Spirit. When we read the psalm earlier on and Isaiah earlier on, these were prophetic words. How did they come? They came through the revelation that was given to them by the Spirit. That's why these words, these scriptures, are not just ordinary books. These scriptures are inspired by God. They, men were uh, speaking not just on their own, but they were superintended by the Holy Spirit. And therefore, the words that came had a spiritual prophetic edge to them and revealed the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And in Ephesians now, Paul is saying, this is what's happened. And I can explain these things to you. He says in verse 6 that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ through the gospel. The gospel is the good news. This was the good news that Paul was taking to the Gentiles. It was bad news for the Jews as far as they were concerned because they were still of the old mindset that these were pagans and infidels and, and dogs. But to the Jewish people, uh, to the uh, Gentile people, to the, the Romans and to the uh, other people around that Paul was speaking to, suddenly they have good news. They realize that they can get right with God. What an amazing thing, and that's what we get today. But we still have the offense of the cross, where in our human nature we believe we should be able to earn and do things and control things, and our own issues of of control and, and, and fatherhood and motherhood and so on, we find it difficult sometimes to just accept the simple gospel, the simple good news that Jesus came to bring us to God. And so therefore, we, we recognize today and, and we take it as good news. But there are still some people who find it difficult, who find the cross offensive, who find eating Christ's flesh and drinking Christ's blood offensive, that that is the only way in to God. They find it offensive. They cannot accept it because they're not doing it. God's done it. It's already been done. It's a finished work. We just have to accept what Christ has done for us and trust in him for our salvation. And people find that ex extremely offensive today and so what we need to do is like Paul try to explain the simple gospel and try to encourage people to accept that God has already done the work for us that we just literally need to come to him in repentance and faith trusting in him he calls us back to himself